The Young Men's Christian Association, or better known as the YMCA, is a worldwide organization founded in London, England in 1844. Kids across America have the YMCA to thank for many of the activities that have become popular over the last 150 years. Some might even argue that many aspects of our nation's present-day obsession with recreation and fitness can be traced back to the history of the Y. Originally geared toward young Christian men, the Y today has evolved from its spiritual beginnings. Sir George Williams, who first organized a series of Bible meetings that would become the YMCA in London, meant it as a way to build social structures that supported theology. Things like prayer meetings, Bible classes, and societal improvement projects were some of the first organized activities that the YMCA took part in. These ideas also spread to America years later. The YMCA found its first home in the U.S. at the Old South Church in Boston. Retired Boston Sea Captain Thomas Valentine Sullivan noticed a similar need to create a safe home away from home for sailors and merchants, and was inspired by the stories he heard about the YMCA in England. So he led the formation of the very first YMCA in America, which began on December 29, 1851. Over the course of the next half century, diverse YMCA chapters sprung up across the country. Some of these early locations were founded by African Americans, Asians, and Native Americans, so it was accessible to anyone that was like-minded. The idea of recreation or exercise would slowly become part of the YMCA agenda, with the very first YMCA gymnasium opening in 1869. By 1881, Robert Roberts, a staff member at the Boston YMCA, coined the term bodybuilding, and he was active in developing exercise classes that were a precursor to today's fitness workouts. One of the first known summer camps for children in the U.S. was started by the YMCA, and it was called Camp Dudley. The camp was founded in 1885 on Orange Lake in New York, and it was created to instill friendship, confidence, and self-reliance in the boys. The camp is believed to be the oldest American summer camp that is still in operation today. While working as a physical education teacher at Springfield, Massachusetts YMCA International Training College in 1891, James Naismith was tasked with creating an indoor winter game that would challenge a class of instructors. He famously hung peach baskets at both ends of the gym, and he taught them the rules to his new game called basketball. A few years later, another YMCA instructor named William Morgan considered basketball too strenuous for businessmen, so he blended elements of the game with tennis and handball and called his invention Mintonette. In 1896, the name volleyball was first used to describe the back and forth manner in which the ball flew over the net. The first group swimming lessons at YMCA's began in 1909. George Corson, a Canadian swimming enthusiast, designed group swimming lessons at the Detroit YMCA. According to the International Swimming Hall of Fame, Corson pioneered radical breathing methods, and he was the first instructor to teach beginning swimmers the crawl stroke instead of the breaststroke. A year later, swimming lessons at the YMCA expanded to include families and people with disabilities. Not only did it help young people feel safe around water, but swimming activities were found to develop kids' problem-solving abilities, and it built self-esteem. The swimming pool at the Y was not just for learning how to swim. 
It was also used as a recreational activity for both men and women. Early on, mandatory nudity was common practice in American swimming pools for males. The YMCA didn't take a national stance on the topic, so individual locations drafted their own rules. Many locations required males to skinny dip, claiming that naked patrons spread less bacteria. Luckily, policy on this topic has shifted to wearing a bathing suit when swimming at the local YMCA. The YMCA has become an institution that has helped shape America. They introduced new sports and provided a place to socialize with other members. And it wasn't just for men. The earliest female members of the organization have been traced back to the 1860s, and they were showing up as employees by the late 1880s. Almost immediately after the founding of the YMCA in the United States, women were teaching classes and raising funds for the organization. Another YMCA contribution was the introduction of a day celebrating fathers. Sonora Smart Dodd of Spokane, Washington, pitched the idea of having a special day to honor dads everywhere at a regional YMCA meeting. The organization loved the idea and held America's first Father's Day celebration on June 19, 1910. Later in 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson would sign a presidential proclamation declaring the third Sunday of June officially as Father's Day. In 1978, a disco anthem was made famous by the group The Village People. The song YMCA was written after the group's producer encountered his first YMCA in Manhattan and thought the topic might make for a good song. Needing an extra song for their upcoming album, Cruisin', the song YMCA was written in about 20 minutes, and instantly, it sounded like a catchy commercial, the kind that would make a good hit. They were right, and the song spent 26 weeks in the top 100, peaking at number 2 in 1979. The only problem was the name was trademarked, and the actual YMCA took legal action for the infringement. Eventually, the two sides settled out of court, and have since embraced their connection. Although the YMCA has become well known as a place to work out, play sports, and swim, it has also been a place for art classes, child care, and after school programs. The legacy and the enduring spirit of the Young Men's Christian Association has lasted now for over 175 eventful years. Their mission of striving for spiritual, intellectual, and physical well-being, along with building communities, is what makes the YMCA an integral part of American life. Let me know in the comments your own memories of your time spent at the YMCA. And as always, thank you so much for watching.